Good morning, I'll call the meeting of the National Board of Assessors to order at 9 a.m. on Thursday, March 17th, 2022. Let the record show the present from the board, uh, Robert Early, Paul Bergeron, and myself, Daniel Hansberry. The first order of business would be the minutes from the previous meeting. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the minutes from the board meeting of March 3rd, 2022, accept them and place them on file. So moved. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Are there any errors or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay, ayes have it, motion carries. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the non-public meeting minutes? of the board meeting held on Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Accept them and place them on file. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any errors or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, motion carries. All right, first order of business would be uh, presentation from well, for the, is the, for accepting the quarterly report. Do you want to go over that? Do you want us to officially act on that, Mr. Uh, Benson? Is that on the vision? It's under communications. It's vision March 9th, 2022 biweekly status right. report. We don't normally formally accept that. Right. There's no motion. There's no uh, action that you need to take. I just provided it in the packet for your review and your convenience. Okay. All right. All right. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So at this time, I'll recognize the representatives from vision. Government Solutions, who's conducting the city revaluation project. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Um, I, you Julian Perry is on vacation this week, so I'm going to um, go through and um, go through where we stand and, and what are the tasks that we're working on right now. So just so, uh, Mike Carello, Vice President of uh, Brazil, okay, with thank you. Uh, Vision Government Solutions. So I'd like to share a document. So I'm going to call that up. Uh, can everyone see that on the screen? Yes, I think we have a hard copy yes. of it too. Maybe do we? Yeah. yeah. We can see it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just uh, it is the status report. Um, and what I did was I just started at the point where we are right now. Um, so basically it just counts all the wards, just give you a count of what we have and what we've accomplished. We've gone through at this point as of March 5th and inspected all the properties um, for the residential and for the commercial. And now we're in the process of doing the callbacks and um, we're actively still doing Ward 3. Uh, well, that one's actually done. Um, so we have Ward 4, 5, and 6 that have been mailed out there, and they're going till March. Uh, and then we have 7, 8, 9 that have been mailed out. And um, the last one that's just been mailed out was Ward 9, and those will be April and June. So we're moving right along. Um, the commercials uh, to be mailed out April for April and May appointments. Uh, and the data collection building permits are uh, ongoing. As for the uh, residential valuation, I'm gonna go over that in a minute. Some of the starting points of sales that we had up through January. Um, the preliminary analysis is ongoing now and should have some numbers to the assessor in the next week or so just so we can have the numbers close as the sales can continue to come in. We can start going out and doing some of the sales review of the residentials. Um, the income and expense forms have already been sent out. They're coming back to the office. We will pretty much be doing, uh, we are actually actively out in the field right now reviewing the commercial properties the way we do the commercial properties are that we go out and look at them first, clean up all the data, so that when we enter in the income and expense information, we have all accurate data for it to be entered into. So this should be done in another two or three weeks for all the commercial properties. Um, the fee review for the residential should start near the end of the month once we get acceptance of the preliminary 
analysis. We'll start to run cards with the preliminary values and go out and look at the um, areas, um, determining grades and looking at condition and uh, matching up to uh, values, current market values. So there's just one other thing that I have. I was just going to show you relatively where we stand with um, some of the statistics and where their starting points are. So I'm going to share just one other document. So we have some sales. Uh, we're contracted to look at uh, the most recent sales. We will go back another year, but right now I'm focusing on um, April 1, 2021 to what we have it now. And as of a few weeks ago, we had up to 1.7 in there. I'll be checking that again as we go along as more sales get in. But for the single families, there was a, a little under 500 sales that were qualified. There may be a few more adjustments to the qualified sales, uh, but this was round one of the qualification. And the median was about 70, 71%, which is fairly similar to what I've seen in the other communities that we worked on last year, Bedford, Salem, uh, Manchester, Amherst, so forth. Uh, and the two families have also been consistently going up a little faster. We had 63 sales and the median was around 65. We like to look at the median because it's the midpoint of all the sales and you use the mean, sometimes you're skewed by high sales or low sales. The three families are actually even producing at a higher rate of market increase. Not many sales so far. We would go back and look at further sales, but they're around 60% of market value. And then the condos are similar to the single families. Uh, they're running around 70%. So these are going to be fairly strong increases that have been expected, similar to what we saw last year in the other communities. Um, could be in the 40 to high 50, 60 range of increases. Right now I'm working on um, looking at costs, construction costs, and we're starting to develop land values so that we can make the adjustments in the system. Only in the analysis side, not in the main database itself. We have a tool to look at just the analytical information on the analysis side. So we have all that information over there and I'm going through that now and um, starting to put rates in and get that ready for a presentation to the assessor's office um, probably in the next week, week and a half. Could you go over the single family skills just one more time, please, Mr. Trello? Yeah, sure. Do you have a particular question or? Just, I, I we've got a power equipment behind us that I didn't hear it as clearly as I would have. Oh, sure. Said. Yeah, so there's different statistics on the, from the report, but a little under 500 sales, 184, and they're coming in every day still, but we want to get ahead of it and start to do some analysis. So the median of those sales are around 70%, 71%, the mean slightly higher. We look at the median. Uh, the coefficient of dispersion, the, the basically how spread out these sales are to the midpoint is pretty good. So it shows that the data uh, that's in there appears to be fairly accurate and that the assessors are coding their sales appropriately because we're required to be under 10% and with a starting point of 8.34, that's really good. Because it will be further uh, adjusted as we look at the outliers. So, because you can see here that the outliers range from 50 to 118, so we know that there's still some sales that we have to look at. Again, this is more preliminary, but it gives us a feel for where we're at and where we have to go. All right, thank you. Questions for Mr. Terrell? Sure. I yes. don't have any. I don't. Can we get a copy of this page, though? We don't have this in our package. Can we get a copy of that page, Mr. Terrell? We don't have that in our packet. I, I can give it over to, to Richard. It's still preliminary, and it's something that we tend to keep internal in the sense of uh, analyzing it, but uh, you can have the copy because it is raw data. I'll get that to Richard. And then, okay. I was looking at the numbers when I was preparing for the meeting. You're gaining access to about a six of the properties. Is that correct? A 
about a, about six of the properties. No, about they, one sixth of the total properties. Is that number correct? Up to this point, is that right? You know, what's the percentage of properties that you're gaining access to? You mean the percentage that are sales to this point? I didn't do no, that. No, no. When you when the when the uh, inspectors are going out and actually assessing, <coughs> excuse me, the properties, based on the total number that you've given relative to, I guess, the numbers that have uh, been visited, is it about one out of every six houses they're getting into? Oh, the entry rate? The entry rate, yes, yeah. I'm not sure if I, let me see if I, I don't know if I have that. Was it in the report? I'm not sure on that. Let me see. It says total interior inspections to date, 3,262. Well, yeah, okay, three, whatever the number is divided by the total, correct. I'll call that back. So what's, what's that come out to as a percentage then? Do you have that or? Uh, I can do the math. About 13 percent. Uh, I did 3262 by 25605. Okay. And then I realize you're dealing with COVID. Prior to COVID with communities that you did, what was the typical entry rate or a range of a typical entry rate? Prior to COVID, it's not as good as it used to be years ago. It's usually about a third, like 30%. And then if I understood you correctly, with the commercial industrial buildings, you haven't reflected any entry rates at all, and you said that's taking place right now. Is that correct? They are going to be, uh, the schedules for those are April and May. Okay, it's not that such I just want to be clear. Sure. Uh, other questions? No. 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 Okay, something came up, that, uh, well, your team was going around, um, and the question was this, with kitchens, with cabinets, and countertops, can you explain the difference or at least give us a rough idea of when an inspector goes in, what qualifies a cabinet or a countertop for an average rating, a good rating, and a very good rating? Well, it's basically um, the age and quality of materials and how the design is laid out. So if you think about Maybe average would be something that was more of a style and materials for that type of property without renovations or being done. So for an example is originally <laughs> we did our kitchens all over a, a couple months, a couple years ago. So they would have been rated as average when he had it because there were the cabinets and so forth that were pretty much the original cabinet. Then uh, we renovated them, and now they're good to very good, depending on how well their uh, quality is that you use for materials. So if you go in and see the island and the all new cabinets and the design and so forth, the, and the nice countertops, you know that that's going to be good or very good. If you go in and you see a standard type home that was built that way and they're still nice and clean, but they were of average construction. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we're all set, gentlemen? Yep. All set. All right. Yep. Thank you very much. This was very helpful. We appreciate it. Okay. Very good. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. All right. So we have no new business, correct? Correct. All right. No unfinished business? Correct. Okay. We have reached the portion of the meeting for public comment. And just a second. I just want to remind the public that excessive repetition and relevant, irrelevant remarks are discouraged. Remarks shall be civil, rude or profane remarks are prohibited. The presiding officer has authority to terminate the remarks of any speaker when such remarks do not adhere to these rules or other applicable law. Okay, at this time, if there's anyone who's interested in addressing the board, would you please come forward 
and state your name and address for the record, please. Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. You know, I do think your public comment statements on rude and profane uh, messages is unconstitutional. And the Board of Aldermen does not restrict that because it's unconstitutional and you should consider doing the same. I don't care because I don't think it's been a problem here, but it's really not right. Um, I have addressed um, several times my concerns about the senior exemption. We're getting into budget season in like four weeks, and I don't know who's responsible for looking at the elderly exemption for properties, but I feel that that should be evaluated carefully and thoroughly this year. In 2018, it was not evaluated, and when they needed to make the adjustment for exemptions, there wasn't enough money to do it in one year, so they split it. That created a lot of hardship for seniors, um, that they couldn't fully fund it. And I think it would be a shame this year not to calculate that and analyze it because there is a big, big shift going on now. And um, there were a lot of properties that were sort of out of whack. Um, I've had a lot of calls. I think you're going to see with this new, um, the new data coming out that you're going to see a number of people lose their homes, not be able to afford them any longer. I would like not to not see that hardship go down any harder than it has to. I don't know who's responsible for giving numbers to the budget committee. You know, I've asked repeatedly. No one's been willing to provide an answer. Um, but I'm just relaying what I think, obviously, you would think is of interest to people, older people, and that is those exemptions. Um, I'm also really discouraged by public access to records down in the assessing office. This um, scanning project, I think, got way out of hand, was underfunded and undermanpowered. Um, you know, the last time I came to a board meeting and you went into non-public, I went downstairs to try and get the property record file for the Arts Center. And Dan, you were incorrect in stating that somebody from the city went and viewed that property in March or April of 2021, because if they did, it's not documented on the card. And we would have no way of being able to tell if it's not on the card, and we can't access the file. So when I went down there, the entire office was in the back room, apparently on the non-public session. And we never allowed this in the past. You know, if the office isn't open to service customers, there should be a sign put up that it's closed to customer service. So when I rang the bell and the assistant, Jen, came to the window and I asked her if she could show me how to print a property record card, she said, I don't know how, on the computer. And then I asked for the Art Center file. She disappeared in the back, came back and said that Rick Vincent was in a meeting. And I said, well, I know he is. He's upstairs in non-public, but I just want the file. Well, I don't know if it's on the shelf. It could be in a box. I said. You just look for it. They're in order. Just get the, you know, you just get the file. She didn't like my tone. She did not like my tone. And so, um, and she said, I'm in a meeting. I'm in a meeting. I said, okay, is there another clerk who can help me? No, they're in a meeting too. I said, is there an assessor available? Nope, we're all in a meeting. And she walked away. I stood there at the counter and figured out how to print a card. And I printed it and then realized I didn't have a buck in my pocket to pay for it. He came up here and borrowed a dollar from somebody and ran back downstairs. It was actually a 20. Rang the bell again and two women came out and I told them I figured out how to print and I wanted to pay for the card. I only had a 20. They couldn't make change. They gave it to me and off I went. You know, I used to go down after board meetings and when the board went into non-public session and go do research. You know, all the time. I'd go downstairs, I'd pull files, I'd stay an extra hour because I was at a meeting. And I do research. And there were people down there who could go get me files. It was no big deal. They, the, the office was staffed. And you can't, I don't think anyone's trained down there, one, to know how to print a card, two, to know how to retrieve a file. And when I put a question into Mr. Vincent, who's trained? Who are our clerical staff members? And what is their training level? I got a response back that no records exist. So they weren't willing to answer that question. I would love to know who's trained. I'd love to know who I can go to at the window by name and say, hey, Lisa, could you help me? Just like I used to do in the days when Cheryl Wally was there. You know, I called upon Cheryl because the other clerk said she was the most trained. Use her, she could help you. I'd walk in and say, is Cheryl available? And she was. 
And that's how I got help. You know, customer service and access to records has never been the same since that office got tipped on, over on, in, on its ear. And 2019 was the end of open records down there. And I think it's really inappropriate that we haven't funded the redacting phase of, of um, the work Inception is doing. When Ms. Kleiner did her, I'll say, show at the February 8th board meeting on me impostering a city official and talking to a vendor, I called that vendor because I couldn't get any updates from the city. I, nobody's willing to give you an update. They never come to this board with an update. All I know is you can't access records. And when the guy told me that the boxes of data were sitting in his office and they had been sent back digitally to the cloud, but the hard records were sitting there, I said, do you realize as um, customers, as citizens, we need those hard records? We don't have access to the digital. You gotta bring the boxes back. They can't just sit in your warehouse for two, two weeks or a month. We're waiting. This is what a lot of time. Okay, he didn't know that. And I've begun filing PA 71s again. It's been almost two years, I didn't file. I wanted to move past that. But I'm back to the frustration level of not having questions answered and access to data, and I just think it's wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody in cyberspace who's waiting to comment, direct the line Director Kleiner, is there anybody in cyberspace waiting to comment? We can't hear you. Ms. Vino is there. It's uh, Jennifer. There. No, there appears to be nobody. Okay. All right. Okay. Comments by board members? I have no comment. Uh, neither do I. Okay. And as far as the building that was referenced, I was told by somebody in the city in a supervisory role that there was someone in the department that went out to that building. I have to have faith and trust in what the employees are telling me. Okay, is there a motion to go into non-public session for two reasons? First, to discuss matters which, if discussed in public, would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of this board, unless such person requests an open meeting. This exemption shall extend to include any application for assistance or tax abatement, a waiver of a fee, fine, or other levy if based on inability to pay or poverty of the applicant pursuant to RSA 91-A colon 3 Roman numeral 2, parenthetical C. Second, under 91-A colon 3 Roman numeral 2 parenthetical L, for the consideration of legal advice provided by legal counsel, either in writing or orally, to one or more members of the public body, even where legal counsel is not present. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. I will call the roll. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Bergeron? Yes. Mr. Hansberry? Yes. Let the record show we've entered non-public session at 923. I'm going to wait.